Hi everyone. Do you know that you can power an LED through mains voltage? Stop. Do not connect LEDs directly to mains voltage. LEDs are designed to work on very low voltages and when connected to mains they might explode, catch fire or expose high voltages that can potentially hurt or even kill you. Handling mains voltage should be done with care and at your own risk. However, stick to the very end and you'll actually see what happens to an LED when it's directly powered from 220 volts. Hi everyone, I'm Bill and you're watching Taste the Code. In today's episode, we will see how we can power LEDs from the mains for the purposes of building an indicator light for my soldering iron. Sometimes when I work on projects, I forget to turn off my soldering iron and that is bad for several reasons. First, the prolonged exposure to heat makes the tip oxidizes faster and once it does, the tip no longer accepts solder as it should. Conditioning and fixing the tip once it's corroded is a lengthy process and requires adding solder paste, scraping and reflowing the tip with solder multiple times so enough of a coating is created. Another issue is the electricity wasted on heat. My soldering iron is rated at about 50 watts, so having it on is like running several LED bulbs. Although that is not much, it is still wasted energy. Last but not least, leaving a hot soldering iron unattended is a fire hazard. The stand does a great job at mitigating this, since it keeps the tip elevated from the table. But still, something might come close enough to the tip and enough energy might be transferred so it catches fire. The soldering iron that I have is a really cheap one, where I've added lights dimmer in series with it so I'm able to regulate the output power. In between soldering, I can lower the amount of power that goes into the soldering tip and this really prolongs the life of both the heating element and the tip of the iron as well. However, because of that dimmer, I'm not really sure how this modification will work. The dimmer has its own switch that I use to turn on the soldering iron. But once turned on, the voltage after that switch is not always the same. The dimmer cuts part of the main sine wave, thus reducing the power that gets to the soldering iron. I'm afraid that this reduced power might not be enough for the LED to build it consistently or bright enough on lower power to serve the purposes that I need. The only way that we can find out is by opening the enclosure and testing a few different circuits to see how they will behave. Before opening any mains operated appliance, make sure that it's unplugged from the wall. We can pop the lid off the dimmer box with a screwdriver and that will reveal the insides. The circuit is straightforward, where one of the input wires go directly through and the other one has the dimmer in series. Since I only want the indicator LED to turn on with the soldering iron, I will need to tap into the wires after the dimmer. If I add the indicator circuit before it, then the LED will turn on as soon as the iron is connected to the mains. For testing purposes, I'll add two wires and we will connect the circuit on them before we make any permanent changes. There are multiple ways how you can safely connect an LED to mains voltage as an indicator and for today's purposes I'll stick to the very basic one. There is an awesome video by Big Clive where he goes and shows all of the different circuits so I recommend that you go and watch it as well but only after watching this one till the end. So the most basic way to connect an LED to the mains is through a resistor. However, some considerations need to be made before we actually connect it. Let's start by assuming that we want about 10 milliamps of current through the LED. In my case, the mains voltage is 220 to 230 volts, but for ease of math, I'll go with 220. To get 10 milliamps following Ohm's law, V equals I times R, we can divide 220 volts by 0.01 amp and we get a resistance of 22,000 ohms. However, we now need to see how much power that current will dissipate on the resistor to determine its required power rating. This is calculated by multiplying the current 0.01 amp, in our case by the voltage that will be across the resistor. I want to use a red LED so it has a forward voltage of around 2 volts. So its drop will be almost negligible and I will calculate as if the full 220 volts are applied through the resistor. If we now multiply 0.01 amp by 220 volt, we get a power dissipation of about 2.2 watts. 
which is huge for just running an LED. So let's see how we can mitigate this. Since the LED will be only used as an indicator, we can run it on a much smaller current than this. Let's see how our math will look if we choose to run the LED on just one milliamp. By dividing 220 volts with 0.001, we now get a value of 220K for the resistor. The power dissipation now is 220 volts times 0.001 amp, that equals 0.22 watts, and this is close to the power rating of the standard resistor of quarter of a watt. A key element in my use case is the presence of the dimmer in the switch. This dimmer will very often run the circuits with less power, so I wanted to see how different combinations of resistors will affect the LED brightness and the power dissipation. For my tests, I made four circuits on breadboard that consist of a single red LED and one resistor where I used 270, 220, 180 and 150 kilo ohms resistors respectively. More or less, all of the LEDs look ok and are fairly visible even with the lights on. There is a slight but visibly noticeable difference in light intensity as expected, where the LED with 270 kilo ohms is the dimmest and the one with the 150 kilo ohms is the brightest. The difference is most noticeable when the dimmer is sent on its lowest setting and not so much on the highest. In the case of the 150 kilo ohms resistor, we can determine the current that the LED runs by dividing the voltage with the resistance. So, by dividing 220 with 150,000 ohms, we get a theoretical maximum current of about 1.5 milliamps. With this current, the resistor will dissipate about 0.3 watts, which is slightly over its rating. However, this is only the theoretical maximum, since, as I said earlier, there will be some voltage drop inside the dimmer, and almost always I'm using the soldering iron on about 70 to 75%. In such case, the voltage will be around 165 volts and that will give us a current of 1.1 milliamps and a power rating of about 0.18 watts. As a final test, I left the soldering iron running for about 15 minutes to properly heat up on maximum current with the 150 and 180 kilo ohm versions of the indicator LED attached to see what temperature will the resistor go to. The soldering iron heat up to about 300 degrees Celsius while the resistor only got to slightly less than 40 degrees Celsius. With all this, I'm ok to use the 150 kilo ohms resistor with the indicator, even though I know that this is below the required rating. Keep in mind that I'm not saying that you should do the same as well. A much better suited option is to go with 220k or even with the 270k for a project that does not have a dimmer in the circuit. These projects and videos take a lot of my free time, so any help that I can get from you is more than welcomed. The least you can do is to hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so you get notified when I release new videos. If you want to go a step further, I have a Patreon account where you can sign up for as low as $1 and receive some of the perks that I offer as well as some exclusive content that is only for my patrons. Head out to Patreon on the link below and once again, thank you for your support. I went ahead and installed the LED in the dimmer case and I directly soldered the resistor to it. I've used a piece of shrink tubing to protect all of the connections and I've then soldered the LED leads to the connecting wires across the soldering iron. Once we put everything back together, we can give it a one final test and declare this project as done. The brightness of the LED is decent even in the lowest setting on the dimmer and it will be a real indicator that the soldering iron is on. Now, let's see some exploding LEDs. Although not always spectacular, an LED connected to mains might and will explode at times. I'm wearing safety goggles while doing these experiments and I mostly know what I'm doing. Do not try this at home unless you know exactly what you do and if you choose to still do it, it's all on your own risk. However, don't get your hopes high. Most of the modern LEDs are made to fail in a controlled manner, so even if you burn through your entire supply of LEDs, you might not get an explosion. For me, the first three LEDs that I've tried, red, green and white, failed in a controlled manner. 
A very brief flash of light can be observed inside the LED, followed by a black burn mark close to the anvil. One LED that can for sure provide amusement is this flashing LED that has a driver chip inside and switches between red, green and blue chips inside. When I connected this one, it went with a bang, followed by tripping the circuit breaker in my house. My guess is that it first melted the driver chip inside and this created enough space for the electricity to arc through and create plasma. This plasma then immediately created a lot of expanding gas that broke the LED enclosure. Let me know down in the comments if you have a better explanation of what is really going on inside the LED during the explosion. I hope that you had fun watching exploding LEDs and that you also managed to learn something new. Be sure to hit the like or dislike button below, make sure to subscribe, ring the bell and keep making things. I have a ton of other videos that you can watch and if this video helped you to add an indicator light to your project, I would love to see it over at Instagram or Twitter. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.